Hello everyone, it's been a while since I've uploaded a webtoons tip video. I am extremely sorry for that, burnout hit pretty hard recently. In my previous video, I've gotten some questions regarding how I do transitions and a few paneling tips. I shall graciously bestow my knowledge. This time, I'll be showing you guys how to make a webtoon from my iPad. I typically use my Hyun Canvas 13 to draw because I'm already used to the keyboard shortcuts and the interface. But if you don't have a laptop and a separate tablet, an iPad or a Samsung tablet would be totally fine as well. On my iPad, I have the Pro version of Clip Studio Paint. It's a bit more limiting when it comes to webtoon making because it doesn't have the features that I typically usually use, like the multiple page feature and the Extend Canvas tool. Though, even without those features, you can still make a pretty decent webtoon, don't worry. Let's make a canvas first. I'm going to be using a 1600 by 20,000 pixel canvas with a 350 dpi. Let me give a brief overview of the panel tool in the Clip Studio Paint app. The panel tool is in the sub tool icon and you have a few options to choose how you want to draw the frame. I typically use the rectangle frame and then adjust the size or the shape of the panel according to my sketch. On the frame layer, click the object tool. You can change the thickness, the color and the brush shape of the panel depends on how you want your comic to look. There's also this cool custom frame tool you can download from the Clip Studio Paint Asset Store. I'll link it below in the description box. So it basically cuts out a part of the frame and allows you to draw your character outside of the border. Number one. So my first tip is to arrange panels in a way that guides the reader's eye naturally from one panel to the next. Using techniques like leading lines, eye direction of characters, and visual cues to create a smooth flow. Webtoons typically flow from left to right as opposed to manga. I'll be using a scene from my webtoon as an example. The speech bubbles should also follow from left to right to make it easier to know who's speaking first. Number two. Leave enough space between panels to avoid clutter and confusion. Adequate spacing also helps in emphasizing key moments or actions within a scene. We don't want the readers to skim past panels too quickly and miss important moments in your story. I recommend a maximum of two panels in each page. Even better, just one panel per page. When you cram too many panels in a page, it gets disorienting and quite hard for your eyes to absorb what's happening. However, the gutter space can also show how fast a scene is playing out. If it's an action scene, a smaller white space would allow the scenes to appear quicker. A larger white space can bring suspense and also slow down a scene. It kind of depends on how fast you want your story to play out. Pacing can make or break a webtoon. Since my canvas size is pretty big, I usually space around 1000 pixels between each panel and maybe even more depending on the scene. If you include the speech bubbles and sound effects, it's really not that big, but it's still enough gutter space. Number three, establish a clear hierarchy of panels to prioritize important actions or dialogue. Larger panels can be used for significant moments, while smaller panels can depict minor actions or details. For example, a bigger panel can introduce a new character or scene to highlight its importance. This is also to make it easier for readers to remember them. And smaller panels like this can show quick actions and close-ups that might not be that important, but bring nuance and subtle movements. Number 4. I get this question a lot. How do I transition from one scene to another? I use techniques like panel fades, and larger white spaces to convey a different passage of time. If it's a new scene with a different setting, introduce the background first, then proceed with your characters existing in the background. Similar to mangas, you can also use 
thin rectangular fl- frames to show that time has passed. Usually, the longer time has passed, the more frames you put. When you want to depict a flashback, I recommend using a different canvas color. I usually go with black or grey to show past events or memories. Number 5. You should consider the composition of each panel to create visually engaging scenes. Use techniques like rule of thirds, framing, and perspective to compose dynamic and visually appealing panels. Webtoon is similar to animation when it comes to this. Also, keep in mind of that 180 rule. Basically, keep the direction of the characters consistent. If the character is facing left, keep them on the left until the scene ends. Number 6. Experiment with different panel layouts to keep the visual storytelling interesting. Use variations in panel size, shape, and arrangement to create rhythm and pacing within your comic. Angled panels like this feels more dynamic and can give a sense of direction. I like to use this type of frame to differentiate my panel composition and make my webtoon appear more interesting. If you're creating an action scene, angled panels are more appropriate, while simple square panels can be used for calmer scenarios. Incorporating different styles of paneling can create effective and interesting storytelling in your webtoon without having to explain what's happening. Remember the popular saying, show, not tell. So that's all for my advices in this video. Keep practicing and refining your paneling skills to create compelling and engaging comics and webtoons. I hope this video helped any of you guys who are uh, curious or questioning on how you can make webtoons using your iPad. I personally don't really use my iPad to make comics, but it's definitely possible. So uh, check out my webtoon, Wolves of a May Lead. I'll link it in the de description box below. and. Yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.